Hello, crypto boys and ghouls, and welcome back to the channel, Tales from the Cryptomancer, where we feature content on play to earn games on the blockchain, such as Splinterlands. And today I have what I think is going to be a very interesting video for my Splinterlands family here. And I wanted to talk about how to deal with unrealized losses in Splinterlands. Now, I mean, what's the current state of the game? Well, SPS is over a dollar and Chaos Legion packs are sold out and card prices are skyrocketing and we've hit over a million daily active users. <laughs> oh wait, that's not the reality we're living in right now, is it? Well, uh, all is not lost and I wanted to spend this video talking a little bit about my personal journey with Splinterlands and you know how I got started, uh, what's happened along the way, and where I think the game is going, and how I'm dealing with sets in the game. So let me just maybe pull this up for you to see. So my personal journey started in August of 2021, so August of last year. And the prices of Splinterlands assets between August and let's say November was quite different than it is today. And this is typically the wheel of names where we like to give out prizes on when we stream. But in reality, what we have in front of us right now is maybe the, the wheel of doom or the wheel of Splinterlands assets that are underwater. So let's take a look at this here, right? So we have, uh, let's start with uh, land plots. So I am a landowner in Splinterlands. I bought some land. Um, it was less than 500, but more than $400. And uh, yeah, that's uh, not selling for that price right now on Hive Engine. So uh, I'm underwater in that asset. Uh, if we look at cards, uh, I've definitely bought cards in Splinterlands to play the game and to grow my account to be able to compete uh, actually at the diamond level. But I can tell you that the cards that I've purchased uh, are not worth uh, what I purchased them for necessarily. I mean, I'm definitely guilty of purchasing a Genoshanas for $40 and thinking I got a steal at the time. So yeah, we're dealing with some of that in an unrealized loss fashion. SPS, well, when SPS dipped to let's say 28 cents, I was like, this is fantastic. This is a great buying opportunity. It can't go lower than 28 cents, right? We were almost at a dollar uh, just recently. Well. It definitely can go lower than 28 cents and it is lower than 28 cents today uh, also you know DEC liquidity pools great tool to generate SPS airdrop points um, I definitely put some money into DEC liquidity pools uh, when it was uh, a much higher price for DEC so definitely have some impermanent loss there as well Chaos Legion packs, yep, bought some of those. Thought they might sell out pretty quickly. Mm, not so much, we still have about 40% uh, more to go. Uh, so yeah, Chaos Legion packs selling on Hive Engine, certainly under $4, so not really seeing any uh, gains in, in that category as well. Waka, first promo card for Splinterlands that I could actually get my hands on. Sounds like a win-win opportunity, right? Yeah, not so much. Well, at least they burned about 500 of him because no one wanted him. So I guess I got that going for me. And uh, yeah, so a lot of unrealized losses in Splinterlands assets. So why am I so excited and so happy about Splinterlands? Well, it's really because of a couple different reasons. And let me talk to you about why that is the case for me at least. So first of all, um, when I look at Splinterlands as both a 
gain for enjoyment and also potentially a way to get some returns on my money spent in the game at some point in time in the future, um, I look at this as a long time horizon for me. I'm not looking to cash out tomorrow, next week, next month, or not even next year. Um, so for me, when I look at this game, uh, for, for me, I'm looking at it again as a way to um, play a game, right? First and foremost. And instead of having assets just sunk into the game to play it, uh, this is something that in time, I honestly believe that I'll be able to at least get my money back and hopefully more. So for me, that time horizon is long term. And it's not something where I'm losing any sleep over thinking, man, SPS doesn't hit uh, 15 cents tomorrow, you know, I'm going to lose the house. Uh, no, I, I don't think about it in that way because anything I put into the game is discretionary, uh, first of all. And second of all, it's not something that I'm looking to extract anytime soon. So the, the time horizon is definitely uh, one of the the key aspects of being able to sleep at night. Uh, secondly, is I believe in the vision of Splinterlands and the team behind Splinterlands. And if I did not, uh, then this would just be any other game. Um, but in reality, what I've come to learn um, by following the game, playing the game, um, and being in the community, uh, these past, you know, six, seven months or so is really um, uh, garnered a lot of respect from, from my side towards the team and its vision. And I really believe that we're in good hands. And if you look at this roadmap here that's been published, there is a lot of stuff coming here in the next 12 months that we all should be as Splinterlands players very excited about. Now I know it's been a slow start to 2022. We can chalk that up to probably growing pains uh, with the Chaos Legion launch and you know injection of some revenue into the company. But long term again, that's good for the health and the growth of the game over time. It's not gonna just happen overnight. And as the saying goes, Rome wasn't built in a day, right? So that is another reason why I'm certainly happy uh, with the current strategic positioning of Splinterlands. And another thing that I think we have to consider, at least if you're in the crypto space, in any form or fashion, if you have any type of crypto-based investments, um, for me, like if um, Bitcoin or Ethereum goes down and you're looking at your uh, app or your ticker or your feed and you're going man it's just going you just see a big you know like a diver jumping off a rock cliff and you go man that's not good well you know when that happens in splinterlands i don't really worry if sps goes down uh, in a given day or a week you know what i do is i uh, i don't stress i just load up another battle and play with my nft card assets that I own in the game and go on about my day. Um, and this is one thing that's unique about Splinterlands and play to earn is, yes, it's a cryptocurrency on a blockchain and has aspects maybe of DeFi, but again, it's not a coin that you just hold because you maybe you believe in the, you know, it's a layer one or a layer two solution with smart contracts and you believe in the team and you think it'll take off and be mass adopted in the future, et cetera, et cetera, like with other tokens in crypto. With Splinterlands, again, um, I can play with these NFTs, I can enjoy the game, and that certainly helps take stress away if not everything is going great in the Splinterlands economy and market. And I would say the last thing to realize when you're having um, unrealized losses in a game or in a token like this is once again, they're unrealized. They're actually not losses until you sell your assets. And I do truly believe, if you look at this roadmap in front of us, 
that this is just the beginning of something great. It's not the beginning of the end uh, of Splinterlands. So these are reasons why for me, when I look at periods like we're in now where we're maybe trending sideways or maybe trending down when it comes to asset prices in the game, again, I don't lose any sleep over it. I look at it as an opportunity um, to accumulate. Um, and, you know, another saying as they go, you know, uh, be fearful when people are greedy and be greedy when people are fearful. And I think this is a definitely a uh, relatable to Splinterlands. We'll certainly see over time if I'm right or if I'm wrong. But this is just how I deal with unrealized losses in Splinterlands today. And maybe you are in a similar situation where you have cards that you've purchased that are maybe down in value. Um, maybe this will help, you know, um, maybe tell a story that you can relate to. And I hope it does. Again, this is just my kind of personal journey and where I'm at. But again, for me, I'm sleeping quite well at night and uh, looking forward to the future here in Splinterlands. What are your thoughts? Am I crazy? Am I delusional? Or maybe am I onto something? I don't know. I'm just a guy here on the internet, on YouTube. But I hope this video has been informational or at least thought-provoking, and if so, uh, smash the like button, subscribe to the channel if you'd like to learn more about Splinterlands as we go on this roadmap in front of us, and until next time, keep stacking those stats. And that's entertainment.